Nothing better than hearing the load of the machine and seeing a perfect chip being pulled off. Bunch of little C's there. 3 16 of an inch of depth. Coming along. Music to the ears, that's for sure. Okay, I want to try a full 200 on the depth there, so we're just increasing it just a little bit. I think we're in here on the diameter now, we'll be able to do it. Let's see what we got. Hundred off the diameter at once. That's a pretty chip right there. We got a job and we got to cut a relief in here. It's just basically a cut out to lighten up the part. And, you know, we have handmade out of some short parting tools and things like that. But we'd like to have a little bit bigger radius. So I have a box of these inserts, but I'm not going to buy a holder for this because that's just like foolishness um, for how old these are. You want to go with new school, but you got these things all laying around. So let's make a holder that we can afford and we can use it to, to consume all of these inserts that never get used because we don't have a holder for them. So well, first thing in making a holder, you just cut down the width here. I'm going to set this up here because this is kind of where we're shooting at. That insert is going to be sitting on the end of that. And we want to have somewhat side capabilities as well. So we'd like to at least have eh, just a little shy of 180 around the end of that cuttable. All right, so we've done the relief on the sides. And we just use the same stop here and then we just flip it side to side and we come into our same measurement all right now we want in relief on the end of this so we're going to pitch this up and then we're going to go ahead and take cuts across the front until we get that clearance the amount we want and then we'll set up and we're going to make the the resting spot for that insert now we've cut across the front of there and created the rake I don't know how much it is compared to what's on the end of the insert, but let's take a look at it. Eh, you know, it's leaning a little bit, but it's close. Okay, awesome. Next step. All right, we took a 3 8 uh, which is just a little bit bigger than our insert, and we came into a point. We're going to leave that, and we zeroed it at that point. Now we're going to switch back over to a drill because we need to get a drill point underneath there. So that will sit down just a little bit more, but it'll be a cup that actually locates it. I think the drill point is going to be close enough. Still leaves it slightly proud of the top. That's cool. All right, we're gonna go sand the end of it and we'll come back and then we're gonna mount that on there. Okay, I've got the insert here and I've got flux lubricated between the holder and the insert. I have this little shim right here because I want once I start getting it hot I want to set this just like this and that'll hold that insert level and pretty much a little bit a little bit positive rake but not much 
I can see the amount in there and it very very little okay I think I'm ready to go here I haven't used these in a while, so I gotta kinda let the lead search out there. Okay, I'm gonna really just sort of concentrate my heat in on the holder material right now. When it gets uniform, it gets hot, you'll see the, the flux will just like glaze up like glass. It just bubbled right in the middle of the insert, which is cool. Okay, I think I'm gonna put my insert on, or my bar on the top here, okay? So I can hold it in place and Okay, I think I'm floating that all around. Even looks like it on the top here. Oh yeah. Yep. Okay, now we've mounted that insert to the holder. That expense right there probably took me no more, no more than total about 30 minutes from start to finish all right and this holder will last or unless you crash it I'm not saying you know if you crash it you're, you're gonna lose it but this holder should last the uh, 10 10 box insert and it just takes you two seconds to float that off after you've chipped up the carbide or it becomes brittle or cracks or breaks or you crashed it and clean it up and then prep it and then set and silver solder the next one on there. Silver solder is just a liquid fastener. I've just cleared out some of the chips here. We've been doing some hogging. We're gonna do a little bit more and then I gotta pull this thing out from the chuck. Um, I gotta bring it out in the chuck jaws about a quarter inch so that I can work uh, the uh, flange thicknesses and things like that. So anyway, uh, before we move this thing, let's go ahead and uh, show the performance of this uh, insert we uh, mounted in on our own uh, holder here.
Okay, once you're once you've got a little bit of depth there, and of course it, it's a little stringy, but that's because of uh, the type of material that uh, we're cutting, just a uh, uh, a soft steel. So I raise that up about above center a little bit, and then I can come out and I can get to this outside register here. Okay, we've skimmed this. We got this down to the diameter. This uh, right height. We chamfered that. Uh, we came, brought this to the height. We bored that. We chamfered that, and and now we're just coming in and we're we're taking this last bit of material out of here with our radius tool, and we got three sixteenths of an inch more to go. So, actually, well, I'm just gonna I'm gonna go up here. And I'll set my dial here. So we know 7 eighths of an inch is our depth here. And right now we're at uh, about 687 or so. So we got like 3 sixteenths more to go. All right, here we go. Um, when when the chips start getting stringy, I kind of like stop and go, so it kind of like breaks them up. But if I can't see my cut happening, I look at the line of cut on my part, and that's how I keep going to where I want to go. On this outside, I got to raise it up above center quite a bit. We got about another 75,000 to go on the depth.
Okay, I just want to make a quick measurement here. All right, we're to depth right there right now, roughly. So now we're just going to dress off here, and we're going to dress off here, blend it in, and we're going to be good. complete on this face here we got to turn it around and it gets bored and threaded in here for the packing nut and the packing area uh, we get four holes that go in here and then it'll go into the plasma cutter and we'll be able to do the scallop shape on the outside but our tool did the job Okay, we're getting ready to thread the inside of this for the packing nut <clears throat> and this is another insert that I've silver soldered onto the boring bar and anytime it uh, breaks up or whatever I just silver solder another one on there and that's this is my internal boring threading uh, insert. I'm setting up my zero spot to start in there. I'm going to stop this for a minute because I want to go forward until I hit my... Okay, I'm going to say somewhere right around in there. <clears throat> okay, and I'm just giving it like 10 thousands on the feed here. Alright, give it a little bit of juice in here. There we go. There's 12 threads per inch. All right, I think we're ready for a test fit. Okay, we're going to call that good. I was able to chuck up on that minor uh, hub that's there. I got a good straight edge. Uh, put the parallels underneath the little lip that protrudes out gives it a nice level and I'm just I went in with a 3 8 and now I'm just following up with a three-quarter bit here and we got one more hole to do after this
whenever you got something like this, you want to make sure that you don't ratchet it real fast because it could slip on the hub. And I also find <clears throat> I got flats cut on the end of this drill, so it shakes just a little bit before it gets down in there. And then it's nice and smooth. Um, I'm rotating it by the small hand wheel up here on the feed. So I got control of it. All right, well, chamfer these holes, and uh, then we're going to take this into the plasma cutter, and we're going to cut the outside shape, um, hopefully. I'm going to see about the setup, so we're going to head out there next. All right, we're set up here now because this is our part that we're actually duplicating, and this was the broken ear, and you can see how bent <laughs> these things are. And actually, let me just see okay this is how crazy it gets because if you look at that o-ring and if you don't see it now now you see it let's see let me tilt <laughs> okay this o-ring groove is not even in line all the way around anymore all right um so what i'm doing is i'm set up in the plasma cutter right now I've drawn out basically the, this surface right here and these ears out on here. I didn't understand that. <laughs> and I have it over on the table. Okay, it's coming over from home now and it's basically zeroed in on this hole right here. Now, you can see since I've modified my rails and I've got my head up higher and I've got this sit down in here, we're barely gonna, we can't bring that over the top of this. It lacks about 100,000. So this, if I set this up a little bit, I'd be able to just jump around. But I was able to bring this down, eyeball it zero to this hole, bring it around, eyeball it to this hole over here. And then I went ahead and actually right now, I'll go ahead and, and we're gonna make a test run here. Um, so let me bring it up out of here and we're gonna highlight our cut and this is just a dummy pass right now so it should come down and it'll make a go around now I had to modify the outside of this area here because I needed to have the clearance in around that ring to the side of my torch. So I did increase that just a little bit to be on the safe side. It looked like it had a little bit more room, but you have this contact uh, clip on the side of the torch and it has to clear when it comes around over onto this side over here. And now I'm bringing it back down to my actual cutting height and I wanted to make sure that it is not making contact as we go around here for this last test run before we actually try this cut. This is just a tiny bit over a half an inch. Okay, I'm gonna get a little ventilation on here and uh, gonna go ahead and put the power to the arc and Let's go ahead and give this a uh, give this a shot. Here we go. Okay, we're gonna shorten that step up a little bit.
I think everything after this today is going to be a breeze. <laughs> uh. We're going to let that cool down. And then we'll grab it one we don't want to drop it and ding anything that's uh, we got finished on the machining we're going to pull that apart and then we're going to have to go start taking care of those studs coming out of the end of the cylinder and then we're going to remake the packing nut because the packing nut is wallowed out on the inside all right <laughs> we just made our new packing nut this packing nut was good and it and it fits in and everything else but the the bore is opened up in egg shape and it's about 30 thousandths and it is what guides that shaft and you want that shaft to guide fairly center line and the tighter it is uh without being too tight to bind but the tighter this bore is the better the packing is going to seal um so we went ahead and we made a new nut and we're getting ready to pull it out of here, put it back into the lathe and then we're just going to part it off and then it's going to be pretty well ready. Uh, we, we used our turbo mill so we do have a little bit of a burr up here. We're going to just take this burr off a little bit and then put it in the lathe and go ahead and part it off. Made a few bronze chips here. <clears throat> We didn't want it to get away. <laughs> okay. Before we go over there, I'm going to take and hit it with the flapper wheel here. As soon as I locate it. Uh, the parting tool screwdriver so you're gonna part it off and you can hold your screwdriver in there to catch it um, okay we're gonna be parting into an interrupted cut until it gets to be round I'm gonna I set it up you know I didn't give myself anything to play with here so we're gonna put our parting tool against that back surface and we're gonna go in and we're gonna hit it and then that should give us about the width of the head out here give or take a little bit it's not that critical uh, let's pick a gear. That might do it. We also want a brush so that we can hold it over um, our tool bit. And actually we like to... We like to take one of our rooks. The, the rook... I don't know if they make these anymore or not. We got this at the Bar Z uh, Summer Bash one year. But it's called the Rook because it looks like a chess piece Rook. All right, it's got a magnet on the back or the bottom. <clears throat> and uh, we're just going to put it there so that the chips aren't going to be flying in our face. Okay, now we, we're past the uh, hex. It actually, parting 
aluminum bronze is what I'm making this out of. It's pretty stout stuff. You can see this run out a little bit because this three jaw actually does run out a little bit and I just rough chucked it on the outside so it could have been running out a little bit I'm gonna wait till I'm just about through here there we go Okay, we just want to clean up the bore. We're not really trying to take it out to any size. We're just getting the surface off of it. And we're going to find a... Uh, here's a rag. We're going to go ahead and assemble the piston. I've already t moved the rings here. So they're not all straight in line. Okay. Okay, next we got to go get our o-ring and our packing because we're gonna gonna want to set the cap up. We need to we need to blow it off so there's no debris on that. Also too, I don't know if you one last look at that plasma cut. That's where I pierced in right there. I love when things have better than the factory look to them. All right, I feel a little uh, dingleberry there uh, from welding the studs on. Just a little splatter, I want to remove that. These all came out really nice. Okay, this is the old cap. This O-ring goes around in here and makes a seal. This was over tightened because somebody was trying to keep it from leaking. And then it ended, ended up breaking a stud and then the cap ended up flying off, okay? Um, I don't know if you get, let me see if I can rotate it. Okay, you see the chewy chewy right there and that outside part of that O-ring right there? That's the leak. Changing an O-ring, not tightening down the cap. You can look at the cap and you, you, can, you know that that O-ring is the seal, not that surface right there.
Okay, we're gonna put in a uh, new O-ring here. It's just white grease. I'm coating it all the way around because I want the O-ring to slip into the groove as well as slip along the outside. Now I put it on here and it sets in there nice. Cool. Now we did pull the cylinder or the piston off of the ram because we had to straighten the ram. The ram was running out. Uh, um, well, I had a roller at each end and was rolling. It was running out about 130 to 140 thousandths in the center, and we went ahead and pressed that just like you see me press uh, um, other things straight in the big hydraulic press. So we didn't bother because we got so many other good information in this video. I said well, there's no need for that, and it kind of moved me along a little bit faster. <clears throat> All right, and then we made the nut. You saw some of that. And the bore of this is, is the guide for the ram, okay? Because this surface here doesn't touch it, the packing, and this is the bushing guide, and it was worn out as well. So, and probably more so because it was bent, or the ram was bent, and then it was doing some wearing. Okay. We align, the, we align it so it kind of hits in the middle there. Okay, we're going to go ahead and get a couple nuts here, and we're going to draw that in equally and slowly. Okay, we're gonna grab a wrench. I'm glad I wasn't doing an oil change. I just dropped my remote control into the trash can there. Uh, <laughs> All right, got my ratchet and I'm, uh, I brought this down. So I'm eyeballing and I am just utterly, well, I am just really being careful that I'm bringing her all in the same amount. There's a, there's a taper leading edge there and everything is lubed up so the O-ring compresses in the way it's supposed to. If you had it cocked or something like that it might lead to that O-ring malfunctioning on you. These are National Fine Threads and I'm giving them about a half a turn each so that kind of tells you about how much I'm drawing it in each time. Maybe a 30 second, 40,000, something like that. Alright, that's in, that's in. We kept it pretty even, right? Okay.
That's about as tight as that cap needs to be. <laughs> and then uh, these are lock nuts. And this is, or jam nuts, whatever way you want to look at them. I refer, refer to them as. And Okay. All right, we have a cylinder that works pretty nice. Now I'm going to put the packing in. And I'm going to pack this just like I would on a rudder port or um, a shaft log on a marine shaft. I would do it the same way. I chose a general purpose type packing just because it holds up to all the temperatures and everything else. Packing should always they packing should be changed out once a year. I don't care what you what you're putting the packing on. Alright, this is uh this is quarter inch. So I'm just going to take a, a length here. Can we do that? Okay. I'm going to trim it off flush with the end and then I'm going to cut it while it's wrapped around the shaft. Then I know what length it is because we want four pieces. I think I took four out of here. Four pieces. And we want four pieces butt to butt and we want to stagger those butts 180 from each other. Okay, after I made the one wrap, I could just hold it in the end and I cut <clears throat> I cut the other three the same length. So I'm just going to put one up and then one down, one up and one down. Okay, we got three more to go. Okay, our last wrap of packing is in there.
and we're not going to try to crank this right on down we're just going to bring it we're going to bring it about where we think it should start at and then use and in place action should really tell the story all right i got two ports here and i'm going to get my rubber tip air nozzle and we're going to go ahead and cycle this thing back and forth We're actually going to put it on the top side here first to draw it in. This pin here can rotate wherever this fits in here. This is a, more than likely, I think this is to lift a plow blade. This is this style cylinder I've seen on the front of plow trucks uh, over the years. So it, 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 it really wasn't described to me any other than it went on to a, a, a dump truck. And, uh, but a lot of dump trucks around here also have plow blades. And uh, with this being small cylinder packing here, uh, low pressure cap. This is a pneumatic cylinder over a hydraulic cylinder. Alright, it's time to call my customer and tell him uh, his product's done. And I hope somewhere in there might be something that you guys can use. If not, uh, if you were entertained by this repair. Until next time, get her done.